Hi everyone, Dr. Biology here. This is kind of part two of farming techniques and it's related to fishing techniques and particularly the problems of overfishing um, related to can we feed 9 billion people in the future? So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is a quick spec check. So here we go. So we're gonna talk about sustainable fishing. So um, the reason is that fish stocks in the oceans are declining and we're looking at ways that we can maintain fish stocks for the future. Um, also, you'll notice key opportunities for skills development, and they talk about understand how application of different fishing techniques promotes recovery of fish stocks. So we'll be talking about methods you can do to uh, reduce overfishing, but also uh, ways of controlling fishing. Before that, though, I'm gonna just briefly just go through um, fish farming. Now, I know this is not purely related to sustainable fisheries, uh, but again, it's related to intensive farming. So my previous video on intensive farming, but I think it's worthwhile talking about that now. So many fish are farmed. Uh, so what we mean by that is that they are placed into containers uh, whether that be in lakes or oceans or in artificial um, kind of uh, containers. Um, and the reason that fish are being farmed is that they are uh, in many parts of the world, they're a really important source of protein, more important than things like meat from livestock. So as natural stocks have fallen, fish farming has become more popular because you can obviously uh, grow a lot of fish very, very quickly. Um, and you can keep them contained in cages, so that protects them from predators. Um, and also you can feed them with high protein growths, uh, high protein food, sorry. Uh, and the movement is restricted, so that means less energy loss. And so they grow very quickly due to increases in biomass. Um, and some people would argue that this actually helps protect wild stocks, because if you're farming them in, um, artificial intensive ways, then the actual natural populations are left uh, on their own and they can um, actually increase in the future. So those are the kind of advantages of farmed fish. However, if we're going to evaluate uh, farmed fish, um, we need to realize that they use quite a lot, again, like with uh, livestock, they use antibiotics to prevent disease. So microbes could develop antibiotic resistance and therefore that would affect natural populations. Uh, fish can sometimes be very unhealthy due to them swimming so close to each other and they're, they're pushing into each other, barging into each other and also any fungal or bacterial infections can spread very, very easily. And also they produce large amounts of waste. And this, a lot, uh, most of this waste is going to be released into rivers, lakes, and oceans. So causing pollution. Um, they are fed on high protein diet, but this high protein diet, the uh, fish food is actually uh, comes from, some of that comes from wild caught stocks of fish. So you're actually not protecting wild fish, you're actually using it as food for uh, intensively farmed fish. So that's kind of the intensive farming aspects uh, that I've uh, talked about related to farmed fish. Now I'm going to talk about uh, fishing in oceans. Now ocean fishing uh, has been around for many hundreds of years. So we, we've uh, caught fish from the seas um for for thousands of years it's just that it, more recently we've developed technology that means we can uh, remove lots of fish all at the same time uh, so efficiency of catching fish has increased due to larger boats uh, they've got much larger nets so these nets are huge and they can uh, cover a large area um, they also have sonar as well. So sonar allows them to find um, the fish in the ocean so that they can pinpoint when they're putting the nets down. Um, and the other key thing is that with population increases, the demand for seafood has increased. Um, so it's become more industrial efficient and efficient. Um, 
and a bit too efficient in places. So certain species have been fished to near extinction and uh, it's really been noted more recently that uh, if you take away the fish you're affecting not just fish stocks but you're affecting all the food chains that rely on those fish and therefore it's um, upsetting the balance of food chains within oceans. So the disadvantages are that you're getting a loss of biodiversity uh, it's degrading ecosystems as the nets destroy other wildlife, whether those nets remain. So um, disused nets, nets that break, um, also types of nets that dredge on the bottom of the sea, and therefore they're completely destroying the ecosystems of the bottom of the sea. Um, and also, ultimately, it's going to decrease food security because millions of people depend on the fishing industry for a livelihood. Uh, so many parts of the world, if you overfish, then you're not going to have enough fish to catch. Therefore, people will lose their jobs and their livelihoods. So what's interesting is many nations have got together and they've realized that this is a really big issue and they've actually tried to do certain things to reduce overfishing. So trying to sustain stocks of fish or even increase stocks of fish uh, so that they uh, don't become extinct. So let's have a look at ways of reducing overfishing. So it's what we call sustainable fisheries. So um, there are different methods you can use. So I've got three methods here. Um, I will talk about a fourth method, actually, one I've just remembered. Uh, but the first one is quotas. So uh, many uh, nations fishing boats will have quotas in terms of limiting the number and the size of certain fish that they can catch at any one time. Um, so they, they can be fined or uh, they can actually be charged if they uh, take too many fish out of the sea at a particular time. Um, certain points in the season, you, the fishing is banned in certain areas of the ocean. So during the breeding season of, of, uh, for fish species, you can, um, what they're doing is that they're not allowing fishing in certain areas and at certain times. The third thing you can do is net size. So um, when I say net size, I don't mean the whole size of the net, but I'm talking about the mesh size. So literally the uh, holes in the net and therefore smaller fish so juvenile fish that are not re at reproduction age uh, and other species that may be smaller than the fish you're catching uh, can therefore escape there are other ways for example uh, line fishing rather than using nets um, also you can try and uh, fish away from certain species so for example you might have heard of dolphin safe tuna uh, that basically means that when they're fishing for tuna they don't fish where there are populations of dolphin and also they might use line fishing as well so there are many different ways of having sustainable fisheries and it's really important for the health of the oceans that you actually maintain fish stocks so for a growing population, it's really important that we maintain and improve our fisheries for the future. Next video, I'm going to be talking about uh, the role of biotechnology in increasing food production. I hope you found that uh, video useful. Please do subscribe if you haven't already to uh, Dr. Biology and there'll be more videos coming soon.